Hi everyone, I'm Ravi, Ravi Handa, founder of the website handagafunda.com and today I'm here to talk to you about some sort of a preparation plan that you can have for CAT Quant in 100 days. Well, uh, I'm making this video in the middle of August and there are roughly 100 days to the exam. We'll talk about in this video some basic ideas about the quantitative aptitude section, how much you need to score, what it comprises of and what you can do in the last 100 days. So these will be the three broad areas that I'll discuss in this video. First of all, let's have a look at the kind of score versus what percentile do you get. So this is for the complete CAT exam. So for a 90 percentile in the year 2018 and in 16 also, you needed roughly 34, 35 questions. 17 was a little bit easier where you needed to solve 39 questions correctly to get a 90 percentile. On the other hand, if you're targeting the IIMs or the top colleges, you would probably need a 98 percentile, which was at 46 questions uh, in 2018 and at 48 questions in 2016. 2017 uh, was a relatively easier paper where it was 52. Now, in case you guys don't know, typically what happens is LRDI is the toughest section and uh, verbal is the easiest section. In LRNDI, to clear the sectional cutoff, which is around 90 percentile, you need only nine questions. Whereas for the same 90 percentile in verbal, you need 18. But quant is the one where it changes drastically. And this is what I wanted to discuss. So uh, I only have the quant chart here. We will have the chart for LRDI in the LRDI video and VARC in the VARC video, which we will be releasing in a couple of days. What you need to note here is that the difference is too high in any consecutive paper. So whether it is 10 to 15, 15 to 11, 13 to 18, 14 to 18, the gap between two consecutive years is significant. This thing is not something that you will find in LRDI. It will almost always be a flat line. This sort of difference is not something that you will find in verbal as well. And this is the reason when you talk about whether this year's paper was easy or it was difficult, at the end of the day, you are just talking about quant because verbal is consistently easy and LRDI is consistently difficult. So the amount of difference that your preparation can make to be prepared for a good paper or a bad paper or an easy paper or a difficult paper, that part of your preparation should be focused purely on quant. So uh, looking at some of the data here, so for a 90 percentile, which is typically the sectional cutoff, uh, for the quant section in most of the top colleges, you sometimes you need 10 questions and sometimes you need 15 questions. The difference between 10 and 15 is really, really high. And how are you going to know that in the exam? Well, you just can't know whether the paper is easy or difficult and your goal should be to solve as much as possible. Even if you're targeting the, at least the topmost colleges, uh, it could be anywhere from 13, 14 to up to 18. 95 percentile in quant will get you in almost all top colleges in the country. Obviously, you need to do well in other sections as well. But these are the number of questions out of a total of 34 that you need to do for achieving a particular percentile. For example, to get 99 percentile in CAT 2017, which was a really simple quant paper, you needed to solve 25 questions out of 34 which is a lot. Trust me, it's a lot. You only have one hour. So this is averaging a little around two minutes per question and solving it in two minutes per question. Also, you'll have some questions which you will not be able to solve. So this is this was really, really difficult. Anyway, scoring 99 percentile is always going to be difficult. It's never going to be easy. But if a paper is really simple, the competition eats up. And this is the thing that you need to be prepared for that in quant, you cannot be sure what is a good attempt. You can only get that once you are done with the paper. In LRNDI, in VA and RC, it's a lot more, uh, let's say, systematic. Now, if you look at the structure of quantitative, you can more or less predict where the questions are going to come from. Over the last few years, arithmetic has given the most number of questions, which is uh, on an average 12. Algebra and geometry have given eight questions out of 34. Modern Math 4 and number system typically has two questions uh, in the uh, quant paper. Now, 
another thing that I did was since CAT 2017 and CAT 2018 papers were available in the public domain. So what I did was I sat down with the papers and I categorized them as to which exact topic do they belong to. And with that analysis, uh, I combined all four of them and got an overall quantity which helps us predict and understand that not just that arithmetic is most important and algebra and geometry are important, which topics, which chapters out of them are the most important chapters. So here is the look. So uh, maybe you can take a screenshot of this or just pause the video. But I want you guys to really go through this data maybe for a couple of minutes. So for arithmetic, as you can see, topics like time, speed and distance, if you combine these four papers, you always have two, three, two, three questions on it. And it gave the maximum number of questions. Mixtures and allegation, which is a topic related a little bit to ratios and stuff, that gave you seven questions across four papers. Profit and loss gave you six. Time and work was nearly appeared in all papers, gave you five questions. Topics like simple interest, compound interest, they are not really that important, giving only two. Averages, uh, giving only three questions. But please do keep in mind, the concept of averages they are applicable in a lot of other areas. So that's why this becomes an important topic. But clearly, time, speed and distance is the clear winner when it comes to arithmetic. So if you have time, speed and distance and time and work on your side, things would really help. See, please note, I have done this sort of division in time and work. So time and work and pipes and systems. So pipes and systems questions are nothing else but time and work questions only. So if you think about these two as one, then time and work actually gave you a total of nine questions. So these are the topics that you need to prepare really, really well, which is time, speed, distance, and uh, time and work, and pipe assistance, and stuff like that. If you move on to algebra, clearly log and log has become very, very important. So log didn't used to be asked that frequently, let's say till 2015, but from 2016, consistently it has given you two questions, three questions. Another very good part about log is it is very easy to spot. See, because if you are just quickly shuffling with the questions, doing next, 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 very easily you will be able to spot a log question. And the same advantage is what you have with functions as well. Because very easily you will be able to spot a function's questions as well, because it will have something like fx and some sort of an equation. But the difference between functions and log questions is this. Functions questions are typically on the harder side. There is something that needs to click. There is some idea that needs to strike. Log questions, on the other hand, are typically the easiest ones of the lot. It is just that people have a mental phobia against log. That is why they are scared of it. But uh, if you want to talk to me about algebra or maybe most of quant, I will say you spend three, four hours on log questions. That is the best time or uh, best return on time invested that is possible because you will get questions on log. The questions on log are going to be really, really easy. As a topic, log is something which is really, really easy to understand. So that's, uh, again, something that I would strongly recommend that you go for. Moving ahead with geometry, circles is the most important topic here, which gives you nine questions. Polygons and triangles are also important, which give you six and five questions. Then coordinate geometry is something that I see a lot of students struggling with. Not so important, not even necessary that you will get a question on it as, for example, in CAT 2018, you didn't have a single question on it. If you notice, there is no trigonometry here. So no question on trigonometry has been asked in the last two years. As a matter of fact, trigonometry has always been a low priority topic. So it is not just a coincidence that it is not there in 2017 or 18, but it hasn't really been a part of the CAT syllabus for a very, very long time. So again, your energy, your focus in geometry should be on stuff like circles and angles and triangles more than on stuff like coordinate geometry or trigonometry or stuff like that. Modern math and numbers, sequence and series are clearly you are getting a lot of questions on sequence and series these days. Uh, let me tell you, not easy. Typically sequence and series questions are again like those function questions where something needs to click. See, I, I find those questions where you are just, which are just mechanical, you just keep doing step one, step two, step three, you have practice questions like this. Those questions are easier. But where you need to think something out of the box, those questions, even though they might look very simple, very small text, but they often take a lot of toll on your head. They often take a lot of time. And sometimes you don't even get the right answer. 
So sequence and series gives you a lot of questions. So practice it a lot, become good at it, but don't expect to do really, really well in that. On the other hand, something a lot safer would be something like permutation and combinations. Typically, the questions are very simple, very straightforward. All you need to know is when to apply NCR, when to apply NPR, and more or less you will be through. The only problem in permutation and combination questions is sometimes the answer that you get, you might miss one case, which is, uh, which is what makes these type of questions interesting. Set theory, again, uh, set theory is a very, very important topic, although you might see only four questions uh, in 2017-18 combined. But you get the concepts that are there in set theory, they get used sometimes in quant, but they almost always get used in the LRDI part. So please be very, very clear with the set theory concept. Numbers, again, uh, although it does give seven questions, but people end up spending a lot of time on numbers, which is often not worth it. So again, take it with a pinch of salt. If you are investing more than a week, week and a half in numbers, it is not worth it. You just need some very basic ideas and I, I think that should be good enough. Then, what should you be actually doing in August, September, October? What should be the base of your preparation uh, as far as quant is concerned? I recommend one week for numbers, two weeks for arithmetic, two weeks for geometry, two weeks for algebra and one week for modern maths. This extra one week that I have mentioned, that is in case you are not able to wrap up the given topic in the time mentioned. So sometimes you might need a little bit extra. Maybe there is a topic that you don't quite understand. So again, this uh, will help you this, this extra sort of buffer. Ideally speaking, in 10 to 12 weeks, and I'm assuming that you'll study uh, roughly 10 hours a week for quant. I'm talking specifically for quant. Assuming that you will study roughly 10 uh, hours a week for roughly 10 weeks, you should be able to wrap up quant, the basics of quant very, very easily. What should you be actually doing in this particular period? Well, first of all, please go through all the concept videos which are there in the course. After the concept videos, once you have finished concept videos, go through the solved example videos for that particular section. After that, go through the previous year question videos for that particular section. So you should not do, okay, I will first do concepts of all, then I will do solved examples of all. No, that is not going to work. If you are doing arithmetic, do arithmetic concepts first, do uh, arithmetic solved examples after that, and do previous year questions after that. Once you have wrapped up all three, then and only then decide to move to the next topic. Only then you can expect to do well in the exam. Along with this, in case you are facing difficulty with some particular topic, that is where I would suggest that you practice level one and level two questions from a book. Because if you are not comfortable with a topic, that's as good as skipping it. Because please understand that, uh, suppose you have two options that you have 70% command on 100% of the topics or you have 100% command on 70% of the topics. I believe 100% command on 70% topics is a lot better. Because this is not like a class 12 exam where you need to finish the complete syllabus and write long answers and stuff like that. Here, a problem would be given to you and you need to solve that problem. You will only be able to do that if you are confident in a particular topic, if you have the complete strategy for that particular topic, if you know all the concepts and formulas involved. So do not try to rush to finish the syllabus, but your goal should be to do it well. Whatever it is that you're doing, your goal should be to do it well. And you have 100 days. So even if you're starting, let's say four hours a day on average, that is more than enough time to finish the complete syllabus. As far as quant is concerned, 10 weeks is more than enough with 10 hours a week to at least go through the basic concepts and get a better understanding of all topics such that you can solve easy questions for all and medium questions for most of the topics. So this is the plan for August, uh, September and October. In the last month, I believe it's a good idea to uh, attempt a few mocks and more important than attempting is to analyze them well. First of all, which mocks to use? Uh, we provide 10 mocks as a part of our course, so I would obviously recommend them. IMS or CL also provide pretty decent quality mocks. You can look at that. Avoid time. Personally, I find them a bit too hard as per the CAT pattern. So again, that's a personal opinion. About the others, I, I don't really have an opinion because I haven't gone through them in great amount of detail. 
So you can try us. IMS or NCL are also really good bets. How many mocks? There is no such exact number or a good number for this. However, I believe 10 is more than enough for 95% of the students. So anyone who is targeting anything till 95, 10 mocks is more than enough. If you are someone who is consistently scoring in the 80s in mocks or early 90s in mocks, again, 10 is enough. If you are someone who scored 97 last year and your goal is to move to 99 this year, well, that is when you need a larger number of mocks. But for most students, two mocks in August, three in September, three in October and two in November is more than enough. That would be enough for most students, not all. Now, we have a CAT course, as uh, some of you know, it uh, covers 750 video tutorials, including quant, has concepts, solved examples, previously a CAT questions. We keep taking live classes uh, for doubt clarification and strategy. As a matter of fact, I have a doubt class uh, on 15th of August, uh, 15th of August at 8 p.m. So if you're free, please come and attend that class. Just go to our website or you can go to the link in the description section. You'll find it there as well. And we have 10 full length mock tests as a part of our course. And with this, I'd like to wrap up today's session. Uh, please visit our website, handagafanda.com. Please like and subscribe uh, on this video. And if you have any questions, use the comment section. I'll surely come and reply to you over there. Thank you.